All right, everyone, moving right along in my mini video series. And this one is all about fire, <laughs> preventing fires, like that little bear that we all learned about in elementary school. Well, now you're going to learn the big airway bear and how to prevent airway fires and fires in general in the operating room because nobody, <laughs> nobody has time for that. So you will see, we have gotten our patient to sleep. We've protected their teeth. We've talked documentation. We've positioned our patient. We've kept our patient warm. So now we're going to back up a little bit and we are going to talk about um, the fire triangle and the fire score and what your interventions are if something were to happen. And this is also on board, so pay attention. <laughs> so at the timeout, so when you do the timeout, the nurse, the, the circulator will do the timeout in the room. And um, in there, she will do the fire score. So there's three things of the fire score. Um, if anywhere from two to three of these points, you got to kind of stop and reevaluate what's going on. So number one, what's the, what's the surgery? Is the surgical site going to be above the xiphoid? So any type of ENT, thyroids, carotids, dental procedures, removing lipomas or anything, trachs, pacemakers. So anything from here up, we're already thinking fire risk. Why? Second thing is oxygen. Do we have open oxygen or not? Now, when you have an ET tube, um, it's secure, you know, the, essentially it's a closed circuit, right? There should not be any oxygen or anything leaking out, which is good. Um, but any type of face mask or nasal cannulas, and we're working above here, we have to be careful. And you want to keep your FiO2 less than 30%. Okay, so something to think about and you have to be in really good, um, really good um, communication with the surgeon because what's our ignition source? Is a surgeon losing, using some type of laser, cautery, bovi, which most of the times are going to be using bovi, cautery, and a fiber optic light source. All right, because when they are using that, you have to make sure that your oxygen is turned down. If it's an open oxygen source, turn down less than 30% and that you've also kind of fanned the oxygen out under the drapes because it can get caught under the drapes. They go to Bovi, right? Because oxygen, um, what happens is oxygen is um, um, produces heat, okay? Oxygen used by itself is fine, but <laughs> it's when oxygen combines with hydrogen, and carbon to form water and CO2 that actually results in the release of energy that will produce flame. And then combustion or fire of that flame is when energy can't be released faster than it's created. So your oxygen is basically considered an oxidizer. Then you have your fuel, which is anything that bonds, like I just said, that, that hydrogen, carbon, um, bond with the oxygen to produce heat. So it can be those alcohol-based preps. That's why we have to let that dry first. Sponges, gauze, the ET tube can catch fire, warming blankets, anything like that, right? And then you have to have an ignition. So you have, you have your oxidizer, your oxygen, your fuel. Then you have the ignition, which is the surgeon comes in with, you know, drills and burrs and lasers and bovies and all this fire stuff. And then you get kind of this like perfect storm. All right. Now, if there is some type of airway fire, what do you do? And the boards, like, love this kind of stuff. So, worst case scenario, there is, you know, you dropped your FiO2 less than 30%. You guys all did the fire triangle. You decided on a plan. Didn't go well, right? Immediately. So, we're going to talk about if this is done and the patient has an ET tube. So, the patient's intubated. We're doing some type of, some type of surgery in the airway. All of a sudden, you see a spark, Right? turn off ventilation, stop ventilation, take that tube, pull that thing out, stop the tube, turn off all your airway gases, remove anything flammable like around the face airway that you can see and you are going to dump water or saline actually into that airway. And then there should be a CO2 fire extinguisher that you should have somewhere in the OR. So you should ask where that is. Um, the thing is, is unfortunately, you don't want to start bagging the patient right away. Um, as you're, as you're extubating, like don't be squeezing the bag how we do when you're extubating because basically that will become a giant blowtorch. So just turn everything off, you know, your flows, your everything like that, pull it. Um, and then after you dump the saline in, the, you know, everything's controlled, then you're going to start to mass ventilate, but you are not going to want to use oxygen or nitrous oxide. You're going to just want to pipe in actually just straight up room air. All right, keep that ET tube. You're going to check for damage and then you're going to, obviously the procedure is going to be halted and you're going to want to do a bronch on that patient.
okay? So I personally have never seen this, but it is super important to know what the treatment is. Um, there should be some type of, um, usually like electronic documentation, you'll kind of document um, the fire triangle and what it is. So just other things to be aware of, always be aware of what you're doing and what's going on over the drapes and what is happening so you can keep your patient safe. All right, I'll have this all in the clinical guide for you with the fire triangle and all the kind of steps and um, um, what you need to kind of watch for. All right.